Hello everyone and welcome to this Sweet Dash review. Today I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about Sweet Dash and as always if you do have any questions please leave them in the comments down below. I'll also be leaving a discount link in the description of this video so that you can always get your money's worth for Sweet Dash. So what is Sweet Dash? Sweet Dash is essentially an all-in-one business platform that helps communication and team collaboration and helps your business run a much large amount amount smoothly that if you have like a number of employees and a significant amount of things that need to be dealt with between different people and also quite a number of customers so it really helps you streamline your business uh, process and overall it comes with a plentiful amount of things that you're able to use as you can see down the left to help extend and improve the efficiency of your business so we're going to begin straight off with the, the dashboard now it's a very intuitive dashboard. You basically have information about different things. You have a few get started posts, all the different sections. You have stuff like customer relationship management, branding and customization. So one of the interesting things about this software is, as you can see, this is branded as Sweet Dash at the moment. But what you are able to do is brand it almost to seem like it's your own business's page. You can get rid of every single bit of Sweet Dash branding if you wanted to, including the URL. You can make this have whatever you want on it. And this is one thing that I absolutely love about this. You can basically make it seem like you haven't used anything and this is all completely inbuilt, in-house software. So that's one thing that I have to commend them for adding it. It means it's much more personalized and people can obviously access it with a good URL without having to think like they're accessing another website. But you also have things like managing your team, managing projects and tasks that you have, all your sorts of billing, all your file sharing systems, your calendar, your contracts, your email marketing, everything like that is all in this site. So we're going to go down the left and sort of have a little idea about what all of these do. So first of all, we have a calendar, very self-explanatory. You can put any tasks that you have and the date that that's due in. You can also add appointments and different appointment types onto your calendar by hitting the appointment type is button. And when you've done this, it will say nothing to see here, but you can add different types of appointments in order to be added so you know when they are. You also have default availability, so you can set times where you're typically available throughout the week. Um, and then you can have a little look at what time you are as well. So if there are days in the week where you're not actually available, what you're able to do is obviously just hit no, I'm not available on Monday. There we go. But if you are available on Tuesday between particular hours, you can have a little look at this time area over here and say, yep, I'm free between 9 and 11 a.m. So people can have a talk to me. People can book a appointment or a package in that little area and have a chat about anything that they're concerned about or things about my company. And then in the settings, you can customize this even further. So if we wait for this to load, we have stuff like allow contacts to schedule appointments. You can have a little look with Google Calendar events. You can based on other appointments with the same assignee, remove stuff from a, a, a particular assigned staff. You can add appointment button names. You can change the name of the actual button if you don't want it to be appointments as such. And you can also have additional messages for them as well. And then also set default parameters for the calendar, such as what do you want the first day of the week to be? Do you want it to be the first day of the sort of the perceived week, which would be Monday, or the actual first day of the week, which as we know is Sunday? We're able to add contacts if we want them. So in the office area or the CRM rather, you can add particular contacts and add the role if they're a lead, if they're a prefix, their first name, last name, and email address and information about these people. As you can see, it goes down a lot. You can have a little look at their location, any tags that you want to assign to them, but you're also able to add circles, events, and deals. So these are all very self-explanatory. If you want to add any of these, you would click on the plus button and obviously add the parameters that are required for this. You can make circles of particular people if they're related to the same thing and then add all new clients to the circle or add all new prospects so you can also automate essentially how much this happens and then as you can see at the top here you can go through companies contacts inactive contacts import contacts import logs and settings so if you already have csv files or large lists of people that you want to put onto this you're able to do that really easily um, and you would simply use the importing buttons here and we can also sort through any that you've already got any inactive ones and any companies that you want to get as well. And then finally, you have the deals and events, which are also very self-explanatory. If we hit on the events button, it will bring up a few parameters for a specific event that it wants us to input. So as you can see, the contact event, when it is, how long it is, stuff like that. And the same is obviously applicable for deals as well. 
Now, when it comes to Office, this is more dealing with the money side of things. So you're able to have a little look at your invoices. So if you want to easily send invoices out to people, you can hit on the plus button for this and you can create, you can send them out everything you need to do in order to earn your money. So you have clients that it would be assigned to, you have the subtotal, any tax that needs to be added onto it, any discounts that you yourself have given it, subscription plans, everything like this. You've got every single possible invoice feature that you would possibly need and you can either save as open or you can save as draft. And obviously when you need to, you can send this to your applicable client and to your applicable customer. So it's great to know that that's there, but you also have estimates, proposals and documents. So this is where you can also go into all of these different aspects if we hit on estimates for instance and it loads this page up we can add an estimate to a particular user as well so if you don't know exactly how much it's going to cost we can still have a little look and create those sort of things as well and then the same for proposals that you might have to if somebody is looking for something and they want an idea of how much it will cost you can do that as well and then you also have your documents and here you can view all the payments that you've gone through so if we hit on the payments button this will bring us to a page where all the payments that we've got who it was from where it was from whether it's been paid when it was and stuff like that and then you also have your gateway as well which is where you're able to have a little look at where you get paid so paypal authorize stripe and braintree are the four options that you have but you can also do stripe ach so directly from bank accounts without having to take it from a debit card so you have a nice amount of flexibility into how you're receiving your money and how your clients and customers can pay projects tab is probably one of my favorites if your company has a lot of things and you want to assign it to a large amount of people this is where you can do it now and also you can obviously assign them to particular customers and clients as well as you can see here if we hit the add project button this will basically show us everything we need about creating a project that we need to do so we'll have a look at what the project is we can set its status as to whether it's incomplete whether it's done whether it's completed or whether we're not doing it when it started and when it will be estimated to be completed you you also have the target time so if you want to let your customer know how long approximately it's going to take to do put it in the make a selection button and this is where you can manage everything to do with this so that you can make sure that all your clients get their projects and tasks and whatever you're doing for them done on time so you have a list of my tasks that i have you have a list of, of all the tasks that are assigned across all of your assignees you have timers so you can check how long each task is going to take and if you've got countdowns for particular tasks and work requests so any requests that you've got for work that you haven't already done but you might want to take on board so this this is a really seamless way and everything is integrated so well on this and everything is also intuitive. I really like how you can filter between yours and also have a look at what other people need to do and also make sure that all of them are done on time with the timer tab. It's really, really good and the efficiency that this will draw out with your company is just incredible. You also have marketing campaigns as well. Now, this is one of the greatest parts. Again, everything on this website has its place and there's nothing that is really considered unnecessary, which is one of the great things. Now, you have campaigns marketing audience marketing and then templates so if we go undo under campaigns this is going to show us all of the different marketing campaigns that we have active so for example you have your sending method and typically you will want to do this via maybe an email sending method or anything like that you can send it via Microsoft Gmail SendGrid or SMTP it's completely up to you and under here we have all of our other options so if we hit the campaigns button again this is going to bring us to the page where we can have a little look at adding a campaign hitting this we'll be able to label the campaign will be able to add what it's for and it will bring us straight back to this page but you will need to as you can see at the top you will need to set up a sending method for the campaign otherwise if you have a campaign and there's nowhere to send it via what's the point in creating one but you also have the same for audiences as well if we hit on this button it will take us to a tab where we can add a new audience so a collection as you can see of names that your email campaigns will be sent to so instead of just sending out to one person or two people uh, individually you can send that out to a plethora of people maybe they're related to the same company maybe they all have common interests this is a great way of emailing a lot of people at the same time but you also have templates you're able to create your own templates um, if you want that are basically messages that you'll send out via your email that are already formatted so as soon as you need to use one you'll call back on it without having to write it out format it use the right font and text and names and stuff like that it will already be already built into the software so you can instantly send out exactly how you like it instantly.
But again, you have content. So under the content dashboard page, you can have a look at all of the content that your company is creating. Uh, so as you can see, these are a fullback dashboard and the super admin, and you can also have dashboard templates as well and portal pages if you want to transfer your people to different pages on your website or on this site, and then announcements if you want to sort of know what's going on. You also have a real nice file sharing area where all of your files are being able to be kept in one really nice place. So as you can see, it's got built-in cloud storage. You can upload files. You can create new folders. You can create shared folders and you can also request or transfer files. So without having to store it on one machine, you can store it on Sweet Dash's cloud, meaning that everybody that you have added can access the same files. And I love that. You also have the options to have forms. If you want to get information about people or stuff like that, you're able to create forms and you're able to have a kickoff, an update or a general form. And this is up to you how you do it. But as soon as you've selected one, you're able to have a little look at exactly how to create one. It'll bring up the formatting aspect and you'll be able to create a form to gather information about people that you can then use to elevate your business. So you have stuff like, as you can see, specialty type, title, the form itself. Hi, the form has been submitted with the following information. And this is basically everything you need uh, in order to create one. And this is all down the right. You have the option to edit or build the form, link embed, submissions, conditional logic, load template, or back to forms entirely. So you can go back and edit another one. And then you have your flows as well. But this will take us to an external a website so we won't go through that but you are able to create flows in order to automate things and get everything done really really neatly as well as that in the messaging tab i'm not going to open it because it's very evident that what it will do but you have an inbox tab you have built in sort of an email service so without having to as i said use an external contacting service or using your own business emails it's built into this software and that is a brilliant, brilliant addition. It's so easy to use. You simply have two options, inbox and send messages. So you can view what you've sent and you can view what you've received. Very, very easy. Auto templates also exist. You can add auto templates if you want. So as you can see, these allow you to build and save sets of automations. You can then reference them manually or use them in an automated workflow. So as soon as we hit start creating auto template, we can name it. We'll just call it one, two, three for the sake of it. And we can add all of these different ones. Now, there are so many. You can send uh, email internals, you can send text messages, you can add people to teams, you can remove people from teams, you can apply dates for specific tasks. So many things on here that you can use and have it completely automated so that every time maybe you want to send an email, you don't have to. You can set a date or, or, or like a, a period of time between each email and then it will automatically send that for you. And I have to say, using automation in softwares like this is one of the most critical things because obviously doing it yourself can only go so far but as your business grows there's less and less things that you can do on your own and you will need stuff to just be keeping on going out without your intervention as you will have more important things to be focusing on and finally finishing off we have LMS so we can view all products or courses that we've got and any settings to adjust them to so products that we're selling or courses that we're selling that require subscriptions or payments we're able to go through all of this here and finally in the settings we're able to edit these settings for the content, the customer relationship management, and most of the things that we've got down here up to about marketing and then obviously the portal pages that is under the content tab here. But that is more or less it for Sweet Dash. So what do I think about Sweet Dash? And in all honesty, I think that it is excellent. It has every feature that you could possibly need for business management. It has everything from communication areas to actually building the products itself, to having all your projects, to file sharing, to having customer relationship management, to having calendars, tasks, projects, everything that you could possibly need is built into this software. And I think the main reason people would want to use something like this and why you should use something like this is it means that you don't have to have numerous pieces of software all around and switch between them everything you will need is in this one when it comes to managing your business and efficiency on that and that is one thing that is really really good and i think that that's the main reason why people would want to use a software like this but thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time goodbye